Hi, my name is Josh. Uh, I'm just going to start my story off. It's going to be pretty basic. Um, in uh, grade 7, when I... Uh, it was like the last month, and... Uh, pretty much... Pretty much... Um, when... I uh, actually heard a couple teachers talk and about uh, I wouldn't make it past grade 8. And uh, that kind of struck me hard because I uh, I didn't know I, I I I they actually they had doubts in their eyes and I saw that so when I went to grade uh, eight whew, um, when they when I went to grade eight I uh, I I took that seven years of bullying because uh, it was racial bullying and seven years. That kind of will that will get that will get deep, uh, get, cut you deep. Um, that's that's just what what I try to deal with, and um, I uh, I had like a passion to write. I had a passion to speak, and um, that's what I was. That's what I could do, but I was not motivated to do that, and. Um, until I went to high school, um, I was pretty much failing because I was not motivated. I didn't want to learn. I didn't want to do anything. But uh, until the teachers, like, from the Aboriginal room, they uh, looked in my file and they just saw I could speak and I had a knack to put words and strike visually that they, they, uh, they, uh, focused on what I could do and that um, well, uh, they uh, put me in a class that uh, was called English 8 when I went English 8 I didn't just it wasn't just the class that changed my uh, thought it was the teacher and the support I got uh, when I uh, went into English I uh, it, I don't know what happened, but it seemed I was failing from all my grades. It was 14% failing. And when I switched to English, by the end of the year, I had 60% passing. So from seven years of bullying to just one semester of uh, a class, that can truly make... Um, your uh, passion come out and be alive. After I, uh, I just had a knack for it, and I, I didn't believe that at first because seven years of racial bullying, uh, that just pretty much it, 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 it kind of made you want to just leave it alone. And this was truly. What, what made your passions come out and express itself and um, yeah uh, it's, thank you we're going to just go through a few teachers and staff who uh, will tie everything together and I'll tie everything together at the end thank you Josh thanks again Josh uh, my name is uh, Robert Taddy, and I'm the Aboriginal Teacher Advocate at Frank Hurt. Um, from Josh's words, we can see that, uh, that there's a whole bunch of things going on, and uh, bullying doesn't happen in isolation. And to deal with bullying as, uh, as a simple, linear, cause and effect type issue ignores the complexity of that. Um, the experiences that Josh shares, we see that uh, it has to do with uh, academic esteem. It has to do with your self-confidence, your experiences, and all that. So thank you again, Josh, for share sharing. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, several students and staff from our school, and we're going to share our story about uh, our endeavors on creating a safe and caring school. Generally, our belief is that a, a safe and caring school depends on the development and maintenance of meaningful peer and student-adult relationships. Also, the access to programs and clear interventions that build student confidence, 
skills, and awareness. Through our wraparound approach, we, en we engage administrators, teachers, counselors, educational assistants, youth care workers, and safe school liaisons, among others, uh, in the implementation of a systematic tiered intervention. Generally speaking, we have school-wide interventions which uh, are, apply to all our students. And the, the students whose needs are not being met by those interventions uh, would receive then targeted interventions. And finally, individualized interventions are employed to address not just the academics, but the complex social-emotional, academic, and behavioral needs of our students. In this way, our focus is on the whole student and their, their unique and entire context. Thank you, Mr. Taddy. Um, hello, my name is Destiny Furland, and I am a grade 11 student at Frank Hurt Secondary. I just want to say it's an honor to be here and to be able to listen to such amazing speakers and be involved with the discussions of erase bullying. When I think of a healthy school, the first thing that comes to mind is the teachers and students' relationship. It's important for teachers to get involved and have a well relationship with their students, talking to them and meeting them where they are. When teachers are concerned, the best way to communicate with them is to not hover or force them to open up, especially when they may not be ready. Problems take time and sometimes kids can't always open up so easily. There should always be an equal amount of trust and loyalty with the teacher and student before you pursue any type of counseling process. Teachers need to know their students and let them come to you when they're ready. At Frankfurt Secondary, we offer the Red Cross program Beyond the Hurt for anti-bullying and our main goal is to get kids to rely on our teachers and counselors for support and helpful feedback. Students from grade 9 to 12 have taken a course to become youth facilitators for our students. Our youth facilitators provide a bridge for students who may feel more comfortable talking to someone who is closer of age or someone they may know, like a friend. Um, also, located at our counselor's office at Frank Hurt, we have a suggestion box, which is Basically, you can put in suggestions if you're a teacher or a parent or a student, or if you are a student and you have an issue or a problem, you can put a note in the box anonymously, and um, the counselors could bring that up. Um, we provide the students with helpful opinions while also guiding them to a higher source of knowledge and advice, such as the counselors and principals. As youth facilitators, we give the students the confidence and reassurance that they need to consult the counselors with their problems to recognize and end the bullying. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Adele Kim. I'm a counselor at Frank Hurt Secondary School um, and one of the adult advisors for the Red Cross Beyond the Hurt Youth Facilitators. Um, I enjoyed the presentation at lunch today and uh, I'm really excited about it because I've seen how the program has grown in our school and it continues to grow. Um, it's a, I, I briefly want to share a little bit of the history um, at our school um, uh, behind this program. It's the third year that Frank Hurt has been part of this uh, program and training. The leadership team's goal is to create a culture of care and support through the teachings and presentations. Our youth facilitators have done presentations to grade 7 classes um, at our associate schools, as well as, of course, the grade 8 classes at Frank Hurt. Um, this year, in addition to the grade 7 and 8 classes, the youth facilitators are quite excited because they've been requested to present to the grade 6 classes as well. Not only do the youth facilitators work with the students, but they, all, they are also working on creating awareness for the adults in the school and parents, uh, and parents in the community. At the last parent-teacher interview night, the students set up their own Red Cross anti-bullying station. They showed videos and explained the goals and purpose of the group. The students also provided information about a parent video and guide on how to help fight bullying. They had a wonderful time doing what they were passionate about as they continued their work of, pres uh, of spreading the word into our community. Our students also continue to work towards a greater level of awareness in hopes of reaching a bigger audience. Last year, our Red Cross students created three films on anti-bullying. One of the youth-directed films won the honor of the Youth Video of the Year Award at Real Youth. This video was also played at the Vancouver International Film Festival. 
Kaysen, a young man sitting in front of me, uh, is one of the students who was part of the group of students in this award-winning video. High school is basically all about having fun and participating in the most that you can and enjoying the experience. But if you don't get involved in the activities that happen at your school, there's not really much experience to enjoy. But that's just from my point of view. Um, Franker and all high schools have enough clubs for people to join, regardless of what your interests are. And there's never enough kids in a club or even a sports team. Uh, the best way to get involved in the school is helping with organizing school events, pep rallies, barbecues, all these things help you out in getting involved. And the biggest benefit of getting involved in the school is you build relationships with teachers and admin. November 2008, uh, two years into my grade eight year, um, by that time I got at least four to five Oh wait, I said that wrong. Yeah. Okay, four to five 90 minute detentions, one in school suspension, one out of school suspension. But I wasn't the only kid who went through this. There was 10 of us who got a group created called the Flex 8 and we'd go in, um, in, in the morning with the admin and we'd have a breakfast. And we didn't really care for it. We just thought, okay, it was a reason for us to get more detention in school. Woo, yeah, okay. But um, actually, it changed me in every way possible. It actually grew on me and I bonded with someone who I look at as my second mom now and that was my vice principal at the time, Miss Christensen, and she got me more involved in everything possible. Um, I'm the only one of two kids left at Frank Hurt who were in that Flex 8 group who have not got suspended out of our school or end up on the streets. and. Now I look out for everyone in my school possible and I'm in theater and football. And as long as you keep yourself occupied with all these clubs and involvement, you can guarantee one thing and that's you will change, you will be changed and see life and bullying on a different angle and help out. Because as I know, as long as I'm at my school at Frank Hurt, as long as I'm around, I don't like bullying at all. So I'm gonna stop as much as I can. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Natalie Singh, and along with Destiny and Kaysen, I go to Frank Hurt, and I'm in my senior year at Frank Hurt. Um, I believe that any school, including Frank Hurt, involved with my students is key to maintain a healthy environment. Like Kaysen, my years at Frank Hurt consisted of joining many sports teams, taking leadership classes, being a part of the Red Cross, and recently coaching the grade eight volleyball team. By being actively involved in these things, I have gained a sense of belonging at Frank Hurt, the confidence to try new things, meet new friends, um, connect with my teachers and overall have a voice at my school. I believe that adults at any, sorry, I believe that adults at school can help students be more involved by providing a diverse genre of programs so that there's something that every student is interested in. Teachers could also spend more time getting to know their students and focus on their strengths other than their weaknesses. This helps students develop confidence and a relationship with their teacher, teacher or admin. At Frank Hurt, we have a big student leadership meet, we have big student leadership meetings at lunch where any student can come and give input or even create a program they want or are interested in. Having events for new students like Grade 8 Pancake Breakfast also helps students feel welcomed and gives them the outlook on what the school is like and what they can do at their time in school. However, just playing sports and joining groups isn't the only thing. It's about stepping up and being a leader or role model when chances are presented. For five days a week, 10 months throughout the year, we go to school. And in the halls and classes, we see our classmates every day. We begin to get, know, we begin to, get to know people, whether they're our friend or not. Um, after this time, we're able to tell whether a classmate is having a good day or a bad day, but it's up to a person to step up and ask that person how they are doing, or even just smile at them in the hallway. It's finding that comfort and confidence to help another person. While coaching the grade eight volleyball team, a fellow coach and friend of mine shined as a leader and made a positive difference in many grade eight girls' lives. One being singing them down and talking about how Frank hurt, we don't say that's so gay, after hearing one girl say it. Along with that, she also noticed how one of the girls always complained about being hungry and went up to the principal to tell her what she noticed and ask her if she could follow up on it. But why? Why would she go out of her way to tell her something? She acted on both of these things because she cares deeply about the students at Frank Hurt. She knows that she has a voice at a school that is going to be respected by students and teachers. But overall, it's about taking ownership. 
any, and taking charge of what happens at school and trying to make a change. Having such role models and leaders like my friend help to build a strong and healthy school along with students who speak up when they notice something isn't, re isn't right with another student or any situation. I have been honored to attend Frank Kurt where I not only get my education but a chance to share my voice and an opportunity to make a difference by being a leader and a pros of a role model. Thank you. So I'm going to try to just tie things up really quickly. <laughs> Um, we're not experts at Frank Kurt. Um, many schools have a lot of the activities that our students have mentioned. Um, we're on a journey to work together to create a safe and caring school, so I want to just talk a little bit about a few of the things that I think are important. Um, we are collectively, as a school, students and staff and parents taking a responsibility for what happens in our school. And this is what we're learning. Number one, we have to provide structures to build the culture. And what I mean by that, as teachers and as school leaders, we have to involve teachers because teachers are the developers of the culture. And so one of the things we're doing right now is um, a couple of structures that we're providing to build the culture in our school is um, we have climate checks on a regular basis where we're listening to what's happening in the school, actually taking a pulse of the school by hearing from teams of teachers and students um, as a climate check. Um, after we had the training with Teresa, one of the things that the counselors and admin um, and teachers that were there went back to do was to work on the culture check that's available through some of the training that Teresa's doing. And this is what, we're what we are doing is currently we're work reworking the survey to survey every student, to survey parents. Because sometimes you think you know what's happening in your school, and as a principal, it's nice to see all of the kids who are actively involved, but you're not hearing the other voices of the students, as, as she mentioned, who are not actively involved. So we want to have a, fi provide a forum for those. So that's, again, providing those structures that help us to hear what's happening. Um, a follow-up to that are focus groups led by students, where students have a chance to talk to other students about what's happening in their schools. We do have Safe Teen and, and the Respect Ed training. And we have some leadership groups that aren't the traditional student council, where students have an opportunity to take ownership in their building. Um, an example is uh, um, students who see an issue then um, at, a, at a recent assembly came forward and wanted to make a presentation to the rest of the student body because it's their school. So we want to make sure it's not my school, it's not the teacher's school, it's all of our school. So the um, second thing is being systematic in asking for feedback and ready to use it. We have two safe school liaisons that wander around our school all school day. We have four youth care workers. We have people out there who students feel that they can go to that aren't the regular um, counselors or administrators. And the other thing that we're trying to do is to make sure we're ready to revisit systems and structures that aren't working and make changes as we need to. What Josh's story and Kaysen's story has told me, because I want to listen to those stories where students are not successful or where programs haven't worked, again, is that we're we have to be explicit and specific in providing opportunities for students to build their strengths and to work to their strengths and to build confidence and resilience. And again, as I said, to provide structures to build the culture and find lots of ways to ask and listen to students by asking students how do we listen to you? So that's a key for me, is we have to ask students, how can we hear from you? And we know this is about erase bullying, but our focus has been on school culture. And we see it as our responsibility to listen to students collectively and listen to teachers who hear things and know what's happening in their school. Um, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for that. Thank you for everybody from Frank Hurt. I'm truly inspired by what I'm hearing today. And, uh, and again, I'm happy to be sharing this with uh, Derek and Donovan, Tracy Kennedy, our uh, Safe Schools Coordinator, um, and uh, Hunter McKay as well. I have a bit of a PowerPoint. Um, it's not been timed, so, and obviously Frank Hertz wasn't timed either. <laughs> 20 minutes, good stuff. <laughs> no, I understand that. Uh, but I need to say that our Making Connections program is really not an anti-bullying program but a suite of interventions, I like that term, uh, that uh, try to create a, a positive school culture that reduces antisocial behaviors and rewards the pro-social ones. So we, ha we have a bit of a story, and uh, it's not a pretty story. 
Um, just before I became uh, principal, we had um, a teen suicide in our feeder school. Um, young boy was 14 years old. It affected our school in a profound way because he was a member of our football team. And uh, we, we had him come up to the senior high because he was such a, a gifted athlete. And so it took the school by, um, by surprise that he did this and, and we still to this day don't know why. A couple of months later, another student at our school committed suicide and now staff were devastated. It was a terrible experience for us all and, and every time we heard a siren, we were wondering what was happening next. In June of that year, some students decided to go camping and they were doing kind of a tribute to those students. They got in the truck, they loaded up the back of the truck with students, they went to the lake, no drinking and driving involved, just lost control of the vehicle, and another one of our students died. Again, totally devastating to our staff, and we had to get grief counselors in, we had to get counselors for the counselors. But what it did do, it, it opened us up to, what do we do to connect our students? What is actually connecting our students to the school? And we knew we had to come up with a strategy. So we talked about uh, a system-wide approach to creating uh, trust and respect and safety and success in our school. And we needed to embed uh, a, this into our growth plan so it's not just a one-off kind of thing. It's a, it's a long-term plan for us. And uh, we hope to focus on safe schools and social respons responsibility and uh, making for connections for our students. What we chose to do is because it was a a massive task, we chose to deal with our at-risk students first. And so we come up with uh, creative ways to identify them. But um, over the past four years, we focused on improving attendance and improving achievement by engaging and connecting our at-risk youth with at least one caring adult in the building. That was our goal. And what we, is, what we found is that by building empathy for these students, we're building a more positive school culture and staff members were also able and willing to show empathy towards all students in all their classes. Students who feel welcome, safe and included are more likely to be protected against substance abuse, early sexual initiation and of course, bullying behavior. Research also indicates that this feeling of being connected to the school also increases school attendance, staying in school longer and academic achievement. And of course, this is the basis for effective behavior support, and we have trained our teachers in that as well. You've heard threat, threat assessment uh, mentioned here today with Kevin Cameron and Teresa as well. And threat assessment training also tells us that connecting students in a positive, uh, to an open and positive school climate is key to keeping schools safe. If students feel that the system is open, they will come to you with these issues of bullying. They will come to you with their issues, and you can help them with it. We have uh, 40 video cameras around our schools and around our school. And uh, we tell students, you're not ratting somebody out. If you just tell us the time and place where these things are happening, we'll make sure we're watching. Not uncommon to find a sticky uh, on my desk about somebody who might be uh, having some problems. Uh, research has indicated that building positive relationships is a foundational piece in improving student performance. And this has been a key part of our school goal for the past four years. And again, having a caring adult in the building helps improve attendance. If you help improve attendance, you're gonna help improve academics as well. So this connects to all the teachers in the school and, and really one of the main reasons we're there. Uh, this is one of those systems we use to, uh, to teach our school code of conduct. And again, I can't remember who said it, but this is posted in every classroom in our school, but it's not a static document. This one's a couple of years old right now but it's in every classroom, it's taught every year, and we look for innovative ways to teach it all the time. And I, what I like about this, it talks about what it looks like for trust and safety, and then also what it looks like for success. So if we know what it looks like, we can re reward that positive behavior, and uh, we try to do that. I used to call this the Holy Trinity, but um, I got a little criticism about that, so it's now just the Trinity. And think about it, a three-legged stool, it's very stable. And what we thought, what makes a great school? And we thought, if, if a school has a great arts program, a great academics program, a great athletics program, that would be a great school. Oftentimes, we're not balanced. We also thought, what kind of a mission statement do we have in terms of the environment? And so we thought, we want to build a healthier environment, a stronger community, and a better world. And then we use this term, stewardship. A lot of students were familiar with citizenship, but not with stewardship. And so this is the idea that we don't really own this. 
we just borrow it and we're going to use it. We're going to leave it better for the next group that comes along. And this led to a whole day, uh, kind of like with the thought about a professional development day for, for bullying. This is our professional development day for the environment. Our whole school shuts down. We have guest speakers come in, keynote. Um, and then in the afternoon, we all leave the school and we go out and do good works in the community. So it's really about teaching the adults in the building how we want things to go. That's how we have to put these systems in place. And you have to have the entire staff on side. For us, it was a little easier because of the story I told you when I started. People were open. What we needed to do is create empathy for students. And once you do that, then staff are more willing to uh, look at ways to uh, involve students. So again, just quickly, some of the big things that we're working on. Some of these things are small things that we do that have huge leverage. This particular one, I put a star beside it. It's called our meet and greet. It's kind of a goofy little name. I can't think of anything else to call it. But we identify all our special needs students and uh, we go around to all their teachers and talk about them. We took it a step further. We took any student who is at risk, even a student who might be uh, couch surfing or has left home or things that we know about that student. We take all these students and we had um, probably about 25, we identified about 25% of our students, and we went around to every single teacher as a group, counselors, administration, non-instructional non um, uh, staff, and we had some strength and some challenge that the student would have. It's really important that that first week that these students that are at risk, when they meet their teachers for that week, they don't end up on a bad term right away. If we lose them that first week of classes, we've lost them for the whole semester. So if we can give a teacher some strategies to deal with a student who's having a hard time, it just gives them a leg up and a boost to get going. We have another program called our Top 40 program. And this is how we start identifying our students at risk. So we just looked at a way, um, our grade 10 students that moved to grade 11, and they were dragging behind them two failures or 200 or more absences. We put them on a caseload of a youth outreach worker. His mandate was to act as a shepherd and to follow those students around and herd them back to class if they were out of class. Their, his job was to liaison with teachers. His job was to work with those students and uh, you know, work with them getting, he, he would even go to homes to pick up uh, students' parents who couldn't make it for meetings. He's uh, really taking the job seriously. He's doing a wonderful job. And the big thing is he's role modeled to staff the extra steps you can do to make students successful. So, the big thing here is, as we started doing some of these uh, interventions, it's changing the culture of our school. I've done these presentations before about uh, some of these interventions, and one of the ones that we do with the top 40 as well is that we have, uh, everybody gets their uh, student photos and they get their student cards. We get a batch of uh, study cards, which we don't use for anything, but it has a picture of the student on it. So we pull out our at-risk students, we take a $5 bill, we stick it to the back of the student card at a staff meeting. We put them all around the table and we invite staff to come up and pick one of these uh, student cards with the $5 in the back with some demographics about the student, when their birthday is, things like that. And we encourage them to do something to connect with that student. Just buy them something, take them out for a coffee, do whatever. And um, it's, had, it's, it's one of those small things that we do, but again, big leverage. And we talked about this already. Uh, we tend to focus on the grade nines and tens as they come in so that uh, they get initiated and they get some transitioning very quickly. Um, we have a, a special barbecue that we do for our students that enter the school. Uh, this year we had, uh, half our school was new because we did a, a, we now a, a nine to 12 school instead of a 10 to 12 school. And uh, basically we have a barbecue where the staff serve the students. We also have uh, guest speakers talk to the students about what, what they need to be successful at the school. I've got a term up there, social lubricants. It's kind of a sassy kind of uh, term, but basically it's just the things that we do that increase school spirit. And uh, the learning carousels are things we rotate the students through to, to teach them about what it needs to be successful at Timberline. Um, we use data. Uh, we've done an anti-bullying survey that uh, I went on the internet looking for a good one. I found a good one, then we changed it for ourselves, and uh, we give it to our students twice a year. And we use that data because it tells us where the bullying is taking place, and therefore we can restructure our teacher supervision, and the instructions are scan, move, interact with those students, and uh, hopefully we can have an impact there. We use themes to, uh, to create focus. So in September, it was the three L's, littering, loitering, and uh, language. Last month, it was positives, find students doing something positive, and we had uh, reward packages with the teachers, ranging from water bottles to hacky sacks to candy, you name it. And um, 
then um, we have an inter international co-op program that Grad Legacy. The point about those two things was we wanted to create some uh, things in our school that would call upon students to do something good for somebody else. So I'll give you an example, the Grad Legacy Fund. The grads were having these dry grad uh, celebrations and raising tens of thousands of dollars and giving away, we call them wedding gifts. They were bar fridges, blenders, toasters. And um, you know, not really of big value to the students, but when we had a meeting, some students didn't like it, so to make a long story short, we stopped giving out the presents. We start taking the money that we would have spent on them, and they created a grad legacy fund to give back to the community. So SPCA, we sent kids to Africa, we did all kinds of things with that money. Kind of the last thing I want to talk to you about is a new program we started last year. It's called the Student Advocates Program. And uh, again, I'm so delighted to be here to hear all these things that people are doing. And, uh, and I heard one young lady over there talking about how can we identify the leaders in the group. Maybe this will be uh, a way to, to do that. So um, basically, we're looking at... Um, we wanted to do this with, by creating an anti-bullying survey, which I told you about already. But at the end of the survey, we, had, we left four questions that we put in there. One was, well, they, they revolved around the four different types of bullying, but the question really is, who in your peer group would support you if you were being bullied in one of these four ways? And we asked the students to name the people. And at first they were saying, well, I don't want to name anybody. That's, that's not good. And I said, no, this is good, because actually we're going to go talk to these people later and find out what makes them stand up for their peer, group, peer groups. And so... Um, we did the survey, and, uh, and then what we did is we took those list of names, and we had you know, maybe 100 names, and we collated that list down to you know, who got the most votes from their peers in terms of who would support you if you were being bullied in that way. Then we took that same list, and we sent it to teachers, and they put in their uh, thoughts on who would. Then we gave it to counselors, administration, and even the school secretary got involved. And what we ended up with would be Hunter McKay, 15 votes, a T for a teacher, a C for a counselor, a V for a vice principal, a P for a principal, and uh, an S for a secretary. So we knew we had the right person. And the same with Donovan. So we ended up with a list of about, I think the first year, about 40 some odd names. And what we did is we had a meeting with those students, called them down to the uh, staff room. They didn't know why they were being brought down there. And we just looked at them. And first of all, it was a cross section of students that you would never believe would be together, because they were so different. And it's because it was a, a peer, peer group selection. So we'd have, as somebody put it, the goth to the geeks. And we had a representative from each group. And uh, they were the alphas in that group. What was important about them is they're not afraid of retaliation. They're not afraid of recrimination. So it takes all the power away from the bully. So when we, when we looked at that group, first thing I said is you all have something in common. You've been recommended by your peers and your teachers as somebody who would stand up for somebody else and help stop bullying. I want to thank you for that because you've reduced bullying in our school just by being who you are. And then I said, would you like to be involved in a program where you actually will get some training and you can go out and start working uh, your magic with some training? Every single one said they would. So we involved uh, the RCMP, John Howard, and we gave some workshops on conflict resolution and whatnot. And, um, and then basically the idea was now they're empowered and we would turn them loose. What we ended up getting was a wonderful group of students together, and there they are. And you can see the RCMP are there, and what they're holding in their hands are, are these wonderful letters of appreciation from the RCMP that would be suitable for framing. To put that in a resume would be amazing. And so now we have these students circulating in the school. So I'm gonna call upon, uh, I think I'll call, one of the students to say a story. Well, here's what we're gonna do, Kevin. We're gonna include the students in the wrap up part. Is okay. that okay? That's absolutely Can fine. Can we do that? Because yeah. we're a little bit short on time. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you. The school and, bell uh, <laughs> is ringing soon. <laughs> and, uh, great. I, thank you very much. <laughs> that was yeah. well done. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry.